So, we're up here in the shed. Yep. Doing a photo shoot on all of the Land Cruisers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me and your mum got some pretty exciting news. Yeah. Yep. Some really exciting news. Mm -hmm. Besides marrying your mum, <laughs> or the birth of your sister, what, so, was, what was the best thing that ever happened to me in my life? Us and then that. <laughs> Think about the think about the SEMA. The pinnacle of my career. SEMA in that thing? Trophy. Truck. No. Wasn't even close. Mm. You hit it in one. The best thing that ever happened to me in my career mm -hmm. was unveiling the black truck at SEMA. Mm -hmm. We had a meeting with Toyota USA. Mm -hmm. And Toyota USA have invited you two punks to bring the FJ49 to SEMA. That's cool. This year. That's <laughs> sick. Hey? Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's cool. That's dope. Is that pretty exciting or what? That's yeah, it. That's On top of that, they also want the 6x6 there. Yeah. And they want the black truck there. Uh -huh. So in five weeks time, we're putting all three of these trucks into a container. Yeah. And we're sending them over to the United States for 12 months. <laughs> Jesus. What do you reckon? Yeah, that's cool. It's going to take a little bit to process, I this think. He's on things. <laughs> That's the first thing you think about. Yeah. Boys, obviously. Do you know how big this is? Massive. Yeah, but like you know us, it takes us a couple of days to yeah. process mm. things, so. Well, yeah. process it. Start processing. You're going to say my buddy. Congrats. That's yeah. mad, this eh? is yeah. pretty cool. And also, I mean, cool. cool. But guess what? Toyota, though. Like, yeah. Toyota. With Toyota. They like, recognise that it's that cool, like. Car. Mate, they've been following the build, they've been following all the YouTube episodes, and um, this is something that we've been talking about with Toyota for a long time, but we didn't want to mention anything until it was all confirmed. Yeah, didn't want to get you excited just in case. And we had it all going, what do you think? That's so cool. So, we're at the whole family's going to the same Well, that wasn't the reaction that I wanted, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that's going to hit hard very, very soon. So, you're going to lose your car for 12 months, we've got five weeks, we have got a, a ton of work to do. Imagine the controls. <laughs> imagine, imagine, when you, imagine when you get one of those on the carpet. Yeah, like just right. See, on like it's processing for you now. Oh, duty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, buddy. That's big, Jack. That's huge. That's like probably the biggest thing that's ever going to happen to you guys in your career ever. Yeah. There is, that is like the highlight of my career, that is the pinnacle of everything I've ever done to get the worldwide recognition on all the hard work that you guys have uh, put into this thing. Having the team here, you know, I, I wanted this to be a family moment. You will never ever forget it. Really You'll never forget the day you drove the car in the same day. Oh, it's gonna be sick. So probably the next time you see the three cars will be going into a container on their way to California, to the United States, the Land Cruisers from Patriot Campers. Look out America, we are coming in hot. How we going guys? Hey. Well, we're back in the Patriot garage and it is chaos. Oh my gosh. Chaos. Yeah. So since you saw that last bit of footage, I think it's been about ooh, five weeks all yeah. up. And in five weeks, once again, my team have just <laughs> pulled it off again. I've never ever been so stressed in my life. Oh, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Even series and sneakers today, which Never you don't do see that. very often, so you can tell <laughs> that she's been working. Um, we're up here at the Patriot Garage, so we're starting to pack up all of the trucks for SEMA, but a lot's happened in the past five weeks. Unfortunately, with time constraints, we haven't had time to film in the background everything that's been going on. We just had to get in and get the job done. A massive, massive announcement was made last weekend. I got a phone call while I was out dirt bike riding. And the twins were actually with uh, Sam Isles. So let's cut over to that. And ha like this could, couldn't get any better. The best thing has probably happened that possibly could have happened. So let's take a quick look at that footage there. I just got an email from Seema. Yeah. You're opening Seema in the FJ Davis. Oh, no way. <laughs> no that hasn't way. Been done since the black truck was there. Yeah. Yeah, dude, you're oh, so what? In the, in the 13 car parade. Be Red carpet, baby. Dude. The USA. Jeez. No way. no way. So that's the mecca of SEMA. The yeah. pinnacle. Can't get better. I mean, we do SEMA all the time, but yeah. with the kids and like... The op opening parade for SEMA, like, 
we we originally did it with the black truck, and it was um, it was the the pinnacle of my career today. Yeah, could it get better? Couldn't it get any better, and now the twins get to um, repeat history with the car that they built. Um, so to the team at Toyota USA, um, to the team at SEMA, the people that we've met over there, thank you so much for the opportunity for the kids. Having the cars on the Toyota USA booth, as if that wasn't enough, um, the twins get to roll in with all of the builders and the guys that they've been watching since they couldn't even talk. I don't know if they'll be able to drive, they'll be looking at everyone yeah. else, so excited. Down the Las Vegas Boulevard, police escort, red carpet, into SEMA on the opening night of SEMA. So that's. That's just epic. Are you going to stand like at the side? How's I, this going to work? I don't think I'll be able to control myself. Yeah. Even right now, I feel like crying. <laughs> you know, when I think about what they're going to experience, I just, it's just, it's yeah. so emotional. It hasn't hit them yet. You know, yeah. and it's, um, I think it's a testament to what we've worked for, what the kids have worked for and um, everything that they're getting from this car, they deserve. And I wish we could have the whole team there as mm. well, like, eh? but mm. Unfortunately, um, we still got to run a business. <laughs> okay, but babe, I might leave you to keep going for a minute. I'm yeah. going to give you guys a run through probably the biggest, biggest rebuild that we've we've done. She's looking good. Oh my god, the black truck. She's she's, she's back. She's back. All in black. <laughs> yeah. I'll leave it with you. All right. Cool. So um, the first shout out is going to go to um, my boys at Amped Automotive, Benny, Cam. There is no way we could have pulled this off without you. My team has just been balls to the wall building uh, a brand new race car for the kids, getting the trophy truck prepped for the last two rounds of the season. So let's take a quick flashback, another flashback. Let's have a look at Benny when he was here at Patriot Campus. I know he misses us. And dude, if you want your job back, all you gotta do is just ask. <laughs> let's take a quick look. Working with the boys in Super Tours is absolutely awesome, but sometimes the deadlines that Jack and Justin put on us, they don't even know how to fit half this stuff. Well, how they're gonna watch this. Coincidentally, yep. you didn't do this side that either. That could have been my fault. That's so why my pressure. shoulders are so big. Just gotta carry everyone all the time. So Benny was one of my A-team uh, in the Super Tours when we were building those trucks. He's gone out on his own, started a business amped automotive with his mate Cam. They do everything four by four. They really specialize a lot in electronics, um, but these guys are 79 series specialists. They know these cars inside out, back to front, but they work on absolutely anything. So. Let's do a bit of a walk front to back on what we've done on the black truck. Black truck was built back in, I think it was 2015, I built this truck. Um, and this was, you know, this was the vehicle that really set Patriot Campers, um, you know, put us on that, that kind of YouTube level and, and started drawing a lot of people to the brand. It was one of the first dual cab 79 series that was ever built to this level. Um, it was one of the vehicles that, that pioneered uh, kind of the 79 series industry. We worked with the best guys at the time. There was a lot of industry first that happened on this vehicle. GSL was still, um, you know, up and coming. Uh, J-Max, I think this was one of the first five maybe coil kits that he ever did that he put onto a vehicle. Um, and there's a lot of other products here that I'll run you through. This is the first Super Tour ever built. This was the launch of the Pecor brand. Um, you know, the trays and canopies and, and all of those accessories that we started doing. And, this is my baby, it now belongs to Christian Nashton, it's actually their cars, I gave it to them for their 17th birthday, um, but it's still, it's, it's, it's a family truck and it's still, uh, genuinely, it's, it's my favorite build and, and the favorite, my most favorite car I've ever owned and this is something that'll be with the family forever. So what we did is, um, what the boys did is tore the car right down, all the bar work came off, we sandblasted all the bar work, um, we've re-powder coated all of that, I've put back on all of the original X-ray lights, the original GME whip, um, one of the big standouts is the wrap had faded a lot. It spends a lot of time out in the sun, obviously, um, when it's touring, but on display here at Patriot Campus. The wrap was all faded. So the boys and Ant peeled back the wrap. I got it back down to 5.3 uh, Designs, Joel and his team down there, and they've gone and re-wrapped uh, the entire truck. Big thing you're gonna notice is um, I've changed the wheels. Brand new product for Pecor. So the brand new Pecor um, machine, 17 by nines, in a Neg 25 offset. When we get to Ashton's car, you're gonna see another variation of the, of the new uh, the new rims. Underbody drive line is still all exactly the same. We gave it, all the boys gave it a, a good uh, good sand and, and sprayed everything and got rid of all the rust under there. But shocks, drive line, it's all the same. Um, I'm, I've gone to uh, 37 inch Goodyear Wranglers. The Wranglers, if you watch the episode out at Genome with the twins, I rate these tires. I really rate these tires. They are so quiet on the road for an aggressive tire. 
but the grip that Christian have with no lockers out there, you can't go past them. Um, the reason I've gone to 37s, um, this truck is still geared from, uh, for 37s from the last time I was in the United States and uh, in the US. I don't have to comply with the 35 inch rule. So I've gone to 37s and the black truck loves 37s. Um, uh, the boys at the bump shop, Joe up at the bump shop, man. Thanks so much for getting this done in time for us. All the paint is peeling off all the trim and the door locks. Um, so I've got all of those parts up to those guys. Those guys have repainted everything and looks a million bucks. One of the big aesthetic changes um, that I wasn't really sure about because I did have those, you know, those big stupid towing mirrors on this thing, which I used to take out lenses left, right and center on those things on tight tracks, hitting trees, smashing them, all the rest of it. It was something I always wanted to change, but I couldn't find anything that was more compact that would suit the truck. MSA have just released um, these mirrors. So I bought a set of these um, from MSA. Um, they do still extend if you want to extend them and they rotate as well. So you can still get that massive view past your canopy and your spare tires to see what you're towing. But if you're going on the tight tracks and you want to do some four wheel driving stuff, how neat is that? How compact is that? You don't have to worry about a big mirror hanging off the side, which I guarantee you, if anybody has got those big style of uh, towing mirrors, you smash them into everything. It's just constant. And I was just buying mirrors after mirrors after mirrors, pretty much on every trip when we were going hard wheeling. So really cool bit of kit um, from MSA. There's a few changes in the interior. I'll get to that in a sec. Whole roof platform stayed the same. Still running the Rhino roof platform, X-ray lights. Obviously got my Max Tracks on top and a Red Arc uh, solar panel up on top. Tray back, all of this looks the same. Another big change at the back, which I'll talk about in a second. Still running my old 65 Dometic. Same fridge that was in there from the day um, that I built this car now. Obviously we, we have a, a, a strong affiliation with Dometic. They're involved with the show. And every time I speak to someone in marketing, hey man, I'm, we've got to get you a new fridge for the black truck. We've got to get you a new fridge for the black truck. I'm like, why? I actually don't like wasting things. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is my original 65 liter and I love it and I'm not changing it for anything, yeah? Even though I love the new ice machine. All right, so my theory on my fridge, Dometic didn't actually agree with me, but you know what? It is SEMA, they want to display the new products. So they've just sent me out the new uh, CFX 55. It has got an ice machine in it. It's 55 liter compared to my old 65 liter and I like my old Faithful, it's, I've almost had it. What did I say? I think it's seven years that I've had that fridge. But um, yeah, brand new Dometic CFX 55 on display at the Toyota booth at SEMA. We're going to do a very, very hard track in the United States. One of the most iconic tracks in the United States. I've added in a scrub bar in the back. So the engineering team have um, designed up a scrub bar at the back of the black truck for me, just so I can preserve the toolboxes. We're going to get this thing on some uh, really gnarly angles. Um, so we've changed that up and uh, which ensures that we're not going to get any damage. Coming around the back here, here's a product I am really excited about. Really, really excited about. The reason I'm so excited about this thing, and you'll show, I've actually put one on the Mega 6, and the Mega 6, you're gonna see it a lot better over there. It's a tow bar, right? At the end of the day, a tow bar's a tow bar. A tow bar is one of the ugliest looking things that you can put onto your four-wheel drive, but it's a necessity. And most tow bars hang really low, so they completely wreck your departure angles. Say on the factory Ram, like the 1500 or the 2500, the tow bar is so low that it absolutely destroys departure angles, especially when you go and put trays and canopies on top. So there's a couple of big advantages with the X-Bar. It sits really high, it's got a skid plate mounted underneath the bottom. It's got massive recovery points on either side of the bar. And if you put on a standard bar, it comes with a massive um, recovery bar right in the middle. Actually, when I do the Mega 6 video, I'll find out what they're low rated for. But on both of my cars, I've got this plate in here that holds in the rear winch cradle and I've got my trailer plug. So I couldn't fit the middle recovery bar. Um, it's got a, a really nice cover plate over the top and it's got specific places here. Now the massive thing with tow bars, everybody drills in their trailer plugs into the bottom. We, um, we got around that when we designed all the PCOR gear by having the plugs up the top so you don't rip them out. But if you don't have a PCOR tray with the X bar, you can put the plugs right in here. Um, really, really cool bit of kit. Good looking bit of kit. You know, the red kind of matches in with the X-ray lights at the front. Um, so thanks, Home and Race or X-Bar for making that stuff red, not yellow or blue or something, because it works with my cars absolutely perfectly. Um, I've got the Home and Race hitch on there as well. Another addition, a new addition. You can see um, the 37s I've got mounted on the back. 
We had to um, go with the new style PCOR mount so we could space these wheels right out so we got a gap in the middle. And I put on the new PCOR ladder. Now you can see in here, um, the ladder, another one when I had the rooftop tent on top of this, you always had to climb up on the drawbar and then get onto the back of the tray in the middle of the night getting in and out. It was a bit of a pain in the ass. But I'm gonna go up this ladder now, I'm gonna show you the biggest change I've made to the black truck, which is something that I'm really excited about because Australian made, you know I'm all about Australian made, and I've gone fully Australian made on the roof of the black truck to accommodate my favorite person in the entire world. And no, that's not Sarah. Sarah's equally my favorite person, but my more favorite her person. She's about that kind of tall and her name's Mia. She's gonna be sleeping in the top of the black truck while we're in the United States. Now, there's a couple of things I want to talk about before I open this thing up. Um, I'm actually, I actually really am genuinely excited about this. It's been a long time coming to get an Australian made rooftop tent. I'll be honest with you and say that Peacor developed a rooftop tent a couple of years ago and I've been waiting and waiting and waiting and we're going to release it. We're not going to release it. We've done all the testing on it and we decided, you know what, let's stick to building camper trailers and let the other Australian manufacturers do what they do best. Now, Camp King uh, are based in Brisbane. They're an hour away from the factory. This thing here is 100% Australian made. That's a nice noise. That's a really nice noise. We're in the strut. Stainless steel struts, very cool. Uh, external struts, again, all aluminium. Wax converters, cooler bar canvas. Uh, so the same canvas that I said that we used uh, on the Patriot. So all Australian made canvas as well. Um, you can see here, the Australian made logo, which I think is really, really cool. How cool is that? How good is that? That little awning. Um, I'll just roll this door up and then we'll, um, we'll jump inside and I'll show you through it. Welcome inside. Um, now, once again, for that extra 20 kilos of weight uh, at 90 kilos, look at the friggin' size of this thing. It is absolutely massive. Mia, and this isn't a short joke, Mia, but she'd be able to stand up in here um, and get changed, like not a drama. Um, up in here for two people, uh, even in my barouche, sitting up like that, you know, you're hitting your head on the roof. Massive ventilation windows on the side, um, all really qual uh, quality mesh. Storage pockets inside, 12 volt up in here. One of my jobs for today, I'm gonna to wire a light um, in here for Mia so she can turn the lights on and off um, while she's up inside and in here. But tons and tons of room. So let's jump down and let's open the, um, the main awning for the first time. All right, let's have a crack at the awning. Now, the big thing I haven't overcome yet, I'm gonna to have to bring a step ladder with me for this. Um, you can see just the height of the black truck and now I'm the 37s and the big lift and it's just like, it's a bit out of control, but I mean, it is what it is, it kind of looks cool, a lot of ground clearance. Um, so I've just got a little storage box that I'll use. Actually, you know what? I might leave the Australian made tag on there. Hopefully it lasts, it's only paper. Okay, I'm assuming, yep, that's gonna be the hook for the back. All right, so it's just your standard kind of 270. Thought maybe it had an arm that folds forward, but it doesn't, but that's good, I like that, because that's one less step that you have to do. So if I pull this all the way around, oh. All right, I'm gonna hook that on there. Now, is that not the easiest awning that you have ever seen set up? That's it. The awning is done. No poles, no guy ropes, none of that sort of gear. Um, I'm really, really excited about that. Now, obviously in high winds, I'll have to do a little bit of reading. I'm not sure what that awning is rated to, but in high winds, you'll run a guy, uh, guy rope out. Um, but that is like, really that's spectacular um, and at 24 kilos like really it's a credit to the guys at Camp King how they've done that it's very cool LED lights I'll probably add in underneath that um, look at all the laser cutting all the folding all aluminium um, all press brake section powder coated cool bar canvas you can see that reinforcement there around the corner which we know we had a lot of problems when we were developing ours with the material bunching up um, in the, and destroying the material in that corner uh, another thing I can see just, I feel like I'm just discovering new things. Um, all these zippers in here. So obviously there must be wall kits available so you can run the wall kits down. Um, but what a setup. Made proudly in Queensland, made in Australia. They display the Australian made logo. So the guys at uh, Cam King credit to you. 
So first impressions are uh, Camp Camp product, obviously really impressed. Last thing I've got to show you, couple of small changes in the interior. All right, so, oh, that was in the wrong position. How good's that? Cup holders are very limited in the 79. Like pretty much everything is limited in the 79. I'll read the instructions on that. If I haven't done it right, chuck it in the comments, but I'm gonna figure that out real quick. Um, so we've got an armrest here. We've got the big armrest in the center that's always been there cup holder reached out to the boys at ec off-road they've hooked me up with one of their brand new head units i haven't had the time to play with it yet but the most exciting thing about it is my reverse camera hasn't worked since i built this car it hasn't worked from day one this thing looks like it must be about a seven inch or no maybe not hmm, could be between five and seven i'll probably come back to you and do a bit of uh, a review but i've got apple uh, carplay it's a full android unit so i can load up all of the apps once again, you see me kind of looking at this and I'm looking like a bit of an idiot. I don't listen to Britney Spears, so I don't know who. It's Britney, bitch. Actually, that must be connected to this cameraman's phone because he's a big Britney Spears fan. And they can never take away your truth. Britney, yeah. You can see the shoulders going, yeah. Beats, a little bit of Britney. No, this one's shaking his head. No, anyway, the black truck don't do Britney Spears. All right, you caught me out. I'm a big Britney Spears fan. But anyway, forget Britney Spears. Britney, come to SEMA. Why don't you come to SEMA? Come and check out the black truck, yeah? Come and see the, the, the FJ49. Support the kids. Come, I'll take you for a ride in the Mega 6. Maybe we can turn you back into a good girl again. I don't know. Anyway, this is going a bit far. I'm going to close this um, about here. That's a run through of the black truck. I'm so excited to get this thing back over to SEMA. I'm so excited to get back into the United States. If you guys are gonna be around over there in the US, if you make it down to SEMA, come to the Toyota USA booth, come and say day. I'm gonna finish packing this one up now. What we're gonna try and do is get Ashton up um, straight after. He's gonna run you through a couple of changes he's made to the 49. Then I'll probably come back to you tomorrow um, with a catch up on the Mega 6. We've done some big, big changes on the Mega 6. And then we're gonna get these things into the container in three days. Three days, loading up to the container, the three trucks are hitting the water, and we are coming back to the US, and we're coming to SEMA 2022. Um, anyway, I'll come back to you shortly with the FJ49. How you going? Hey, I'm good. You were just listening to all of that? I was just listening, taking it all in. I well, know some stuff, right? I'm done, I've loaded all the swags with all of the bedding, the pillows. Ranger swags, we haven't given these guys a plug. Hey, have we, but we're now converted. I've got to say, well, normally the boys are sleeping in there, but mm. as I was packing them all, there's lighting strips, there's all this cool stuff You've got to check them out. Maybe in the US, I'll, I'll give you a bit more mm. view through here. Yeah. So, how are we going to roll you and me in the x-ray? Mm -hmm. The little girl upstairs, mm -hmm. yeah, in the big bed. Yep. Then the twins are going to be in swags, and then we've got two extra swags for the camera crew when they come over and join us um, after SEMA for the big trip. A couple of other things we're taking with us. So we've got to load um, the Dometic chairs into the black truck. They fit in the top of the canopy, but you've actually packed in like four Helinox chairs. I've got as much in as I could into the trailer, yeah. um, but you know, it's better to take a little bit more than not. Yeah, people are genuinely interested, I think, in how you pack your trailer. And Sarah does all the packing on the camp truck. So do you want to run through the X-ray? Yeah, this is a bit different to home, of course. Yeah. Um, but... Well, leave the rooftop tent down. I'm going to run next door for a minute and get some more gear. Mm -hmm. I'll leave it with you. Give them a look around how we use our x-ray. Yeah, maybe in comparison. And I'm pretty sure everybody's gonna be very surprised by how much stuff we don't take. So this X3 is different to how I'd normally pack our X3 in Oz. Um, obviously, this is going in a container and going to the US. So it's gonna be shaking around, it's gonna be on the water for weeks on end. Um, we basically just put in what we need and what we kind of use at home um, that's gonna make our camping more comfortable in the US. So uh, we'll just have a quick look. We've just got um, our Dometic fridge. So this is 75 litre, same as we use in Oz. Uh, just, you know, simple stuff. We've got some plates, knives, um, tongs in there, cutlery and everything I'll show you. I've actually put in a, a reel at the back because obviously in transit, everything in here is gonna be rocking around and, um, you know, 
smashing around in the trailer. So you kind of want to condense it down so uh, you get everything in the same condition at the other end. In this one, um, it is US spec, so we don't have um, the stove in here. Uh, we'll pick up something over there, but I will show you something really cool um, in a minute, which we will be doing majority of our cooking on. Um, at the moment, I've just got chopping boards, tea towels in there. Um, I've got the jet boil in there as well. Justin loves his jet boil. You need to take that everywhere you go. And Mia also loves her noodles, so that one works a treat. Pots and pans, I've just put it in um, this storage bag just so it's not gonna be rattling around. Um, we've just got some coffee cups and, and stuff in there, you know, good old ones that we roll with, that they're Dometic. And that's pretty much it. Uh, when we get there, you load with all the, you know, the food, the dry food, um, anything we need like that. We've got the chairs. We've also loaded up with, um, you know, all the Patriot Supply camping gear. That's what we use here. So um, why not whack it in the trailer and use it when we're in the US? Okay, so in the rear of the trailer, um, we've got a couple of flat pack storage boxes there that when we get there, we'll pull those out. They'll be loaded with all, with all of our dry food. Um, same with the aluminium box there. So we decide when we get there what's going in everything. We've got Dometic uh, folding table there. It's nice and compact, so it fits in the back nice and well. Um, we've got, yeah, bin, rubbish bin, couple of storage bags. We've got a shower tent actually up there that you can't see. Um, Patriot shower tent. Uh, that one's always good to have. We used to, in the wild, before Justin got famous, just shower freely, but now you need Patriot shower tent. Um, okay, in here you can see pretty much nothing. I uh, don't want it all banging around. I did mention I had all of our cutlery and everything just in a roll here. So it just makes it easier. Everything's not smashing around. I won't get all that out for you, but um, yeah, all there, nice and easy. Makes the trip flow. Less stress, the better. Come around this side. I do have some smaller chairs um, packed in this compartment here. Um, just for travel, you want to keep, um, you know, everything as small as possible. Uh, so some small little chairs in there. We'll also um, have some bigger chairs. The boys, you know, like the big chairs, but they'll be in the black truck. So we'll pack them with the swags and everything. Uh, we put all of our hoses, drains, anything in this compartment. You know, it's easy if you try and keep everything together and then um, you're not running around trying to look for it. Um, now this is something pretty special. We might actually go around the front of the trailer and I'll open it um, and give you guys a look at what this little beauty is. Okay, so this is the Jetboil Genesis. Justin and I uh, will have to cut back and show you. Use this, I think it's about four years ago in the US. Um, it had just come out there and we thought it was the coolest thing ever. We were traveling just us, um, but also, you know, with the kids, this is more than enough. So I don't even really know if we're gonna put a cooker in here. We might just use this the whole time. It's, um, anyone that's used a jet boil will know how handy that is. Um, this is pretty cool. So you've got your fry pan here. This is, this is the original one, so it has been used. But you can see there you've got your twin burner. So it packs up really nice and compact in that one little case. Um, you know, you can make pretty much anything on here. We did, um, what did we do? I think we did um, tacos or burritos or something when we were in the US. Um, but you can see how big that pan is. We definitely feed the family out of this. Uh, to us, it's all about compact. So being compact, easy to travel with for the five of us. Um, this is really cool. Just being released in Oz, get your hands on it. And then we've got the front box, the man cave, Justin's favorite part of the trailer. Uh, he's packed this bit himself. We've just got floor mats in there. We've got a camp oven. If we can do any, you know, open fire cooking while we're there, we're not too sure where we're gonna be going. So it's good to have, you know, both as an option. Peg kit, uh, we've got the Wabasto in this one. So we've got hot water for the sink and the shower. We've got the heater up in the tent. Um, living in luxury, really. 
But that's pretty much it. We're not loaded with gas. Again, we're going to the US. It's all about packing lightly. Um, yeah, that's about it. Different packing to packing here, um, but we've got all of the basics that we like to travel with. All right, y'all, it's D-Day. Now we've got word that the containers have been delayed a little bit, so there's a lot that's changed on the Mega 6, which you guys aren't aware about, and I'm gonna run you through it today.